Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about school, back to school. And yes, for some in the province of Ontario, for example, it's been a very long time. So tonight we're going to talk about traffic rules, regulations around school signs and those types of things to make you a safer, smarter driver. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. Hi there, Smart Drivers. Welcome back. Uh, Tim is here, Drive Smart BC. Tim is a retired RCMP constable. Tim has a, a website, Drive Smart BC, if you want to know anything about traffic rules, regulations, and safety here in the province of British Columbia. Definitely check out Tim's website, his forum. Great forum over there about discussion about all of these rules and cultures and whatnot. So definitely check out Tim's stuff. Jim Bob's here. Manosh Mallory is here my friend Ben is here so there's quite a few people here already tonight that's awesome and the way that the live stream works is that I do a presentation for about 10 or 12 minutes and then I come back and I answer any questions you have about passing a driver's test most of you have questions about learning how to drive and passing a driver's test as well I answer any questions about becoming a safer smarter driver and questions about getting your CDL license get to learn how to drive a bus or a truck and start a career doing that. And Tim, you are most welcome, my friend. So that's what we do as well. Uh, Corey should be here shortly. Uh, Corey is Bricks for Wheels. That's his username. Corey is the moderator. He does an excellent, excellent job of getting up videos that I suggest for further detail on answers to questions that I give smart drivers as well. He keeps out the, you know, the people that try to spam us and whatnot. While we're going through here so if you have any questions at all uh let me know and usually these are fairly busy so if uh, i don't get to your question just uh remind me that you did ask a question and i'll get back to it i'll do the best i can otherwise uh for those of you watching on the replay leave a comment down in the comment section there and we'll do what we can to get your question answered for you or send me an email rick at smartdrivetest.com so uh, without further ado here, I'll get over to the slideshow presentation. There's Corey. Corey just popped in, Bricks for Wheels. Uh, hello, Corey. Corey is in Winnipeg, Manitoba. <laughs> we had a quick jaunt through Winnipeg as we were driving across the country there a couple of weeks ago. So uh, without further ado, let's get off to, let's get over to the presentation here. Uh, back to school driving. And school buses are going to be on the roads in rural areas within cities and those types of things. And of course, cautionary lights, strobe lights, and uh, extended stop sign arms with flashing lights on the stop signs. All of this is conducive to school buses in North America and they are yellow in color. All right, so those of you new to Smart Drive Test, my name is Rick August. Uh, I was a truck driver in the 1990s. I drove for Greyhound and one of the regional bus lines in Australia while I was going to university at the University of Melbourne. I uh, became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997. Most of my career in teaching driver education and traffic safety has been with commercial vehicles. Air brakes is also another one of my uh, fortes. It's my expertise. Uh, 2006, I graduated from the University of Melbourne with my degree in legal history, which is study policing, courts, and prisons. My expertise is in policing as it relates to traffic, oddly enough. And then in 2015, after teaching at the university, teaching at truck driving schools for a number of years, uh, I started the YouTube channel and the online business, and all of this has been wildly more successful than I could have ever imagined. You wanna check out more about that, check out the autobiography over at the Smart Drive Test website, and Corey will put the link up for that as well. New videos this week, uh, merging right, how to merge correctly, onto a highway freeway and one of the things that i do say in that video is do not ever 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 stop on an acceleration lane you know match the speed of the traffic on the highway and then merge over and at some point you're going to have to get your foot right into the throttle and get going and so have a look at that video and as well after six lessons that we've put up in the last six weeks with ariel or ariel did in fact pass her driver's test I'm very excited about that had a little bit of uh, celebration about her passing her driver's test and she gave you a couple of tips about things that she needed to do for you to be successful on your driver's test so back to school driving and the defensive driving model that I am proposing that I have created and founded is called Spock 3 so the three Spocks young Spock middle Spock you know middle-aged Spock and then there's old Spock 
And that stands for social driving, which is the way that people drive after they get their license. They keep up with traffic flow, so they're often, often driving faster than the posted speed limit. Not stopping completely at stop sign intersections, driving over painted islands, me first kind of attitude, uh, they're following too close, it's reactionary and those types of things. So all of that is what you're going to be encountering when you're driving. And then the first component of making yourself a safer, smarter driver in the arena of social driving is space management. And because a lot of us are in urban areas that have a lot of traffic and it's very difficult to you know, have an out around your vehicle, you can always manage the space in front of your vehicle. Always have that three to four second following distance. That way you can have time and time buys you options and therefore you can respond appropriately in the event of something going wrong on the roadway as it's going to happen in the arena of social driving. Speed management. Speed management allows you to control your space around your vehicle because if you're not near anything it's less likely that you're going to hit something. You control your speed. You uh, observe correctly with your scanning patterns, looking far down the road, checking your mirrors and knowing and track, monitoring, mapping and tracking vehicles around you and your speed in relation to them. And then finally, you have to communicate with other traffic as well in the ways that we communicate, lights and signals, uh, horn, use your horn sparingly because in this day and age, it's seen as a sign of aggression. Hand gestures, appropriate hand gestures, don't tell anybody they're number one on a road test. And then eye contact and the position of your vehicle on the roadway will communicate your intentions and the attention of other drivers on the roadway. And Corey's put up the videos, those new videos there. He's got the links there, which is really great. Thanks so much for that, Corey. School signs. So there are a number of school signs that you will encounter as kids are going back to school and you're driving in and around your neighborhoods. And you're going to find that school signs are not consistent. Some of them are regulatory, as you can see down in the bottom right hand corner there. Some of them are, uh, sorry, all of them are regulatory signs, but they have different shapes. But for the most part, they're pentagon in shape, which means they look like a house. They have a gable roof on them and they're square. And But the colors are not consistent. They can be blue, they can be green, uh, they can be yellow, and they can be kind of a neon color as well. And I've also seen them as cautionary signs. So they're the least consistent of the traffic signs on our roadways. But I think that authorities are moving towards making these more consistent so that people know that there's a school in the area sign slow when students are present. These are becoming less and less common on our roadways because they're confusing for drivers. Uh, school speed zones, which you have to do this posted speed limit when school is in session, only when school is in session. And then school crosswalk signs. These are crosswalks that are in front of the school building. And these are regulatory signs because they're rectangular in shape, white background with black lettering and symbols on them. And the other piece that I forgot is, is that school signs are pentagon in shape. They also always have two people on them as opposed to a playground sign, which has one person on it. So that's a playground sign. School signs have two people on them, okay? So school zone, speed zone sign. This is a regulatory sign and it's only in effect when school is in session. And if you're on a driver's test and you don't know where the school zones are in and around the DMV or the test center where you're gonna be taking your test, I encourage you, <laughs> really encourage you to go out and figure out where these are because if you speed in a school speed zone, during your driver's test when school is in session, that's an automatic fail on a driver's test. Slow when students present on highways. These, as I said, are beginning to disappear because many drivers find these confusing. They don't know whether they need to slow or do the speed limit when students are walking along the highway in and around school areas in kind of, usually they're found in rural areas or less, you know, there's less populated areas and those types of things. So these are where you're gonna find these conditional signs along the roadways in and around schools. And then school buses, we talked about these at the introduction. You're gonna find them in both the city and in the country uh, going to schools. They're yellow. Uh, they will have both yellow cautionary lights that will activate before the bus comes to a complete stop. And then once the bus comes to a stop, the red lights will activate. When the driver stops the bus completely, 
the driver will open the door, the stop sign with the flashing lights on it will extend and you must come to a stop. Behind the bus, usually about three vehicle lengths, and if you're on the other side of approaching the vehicle, usually on a two lane, uh, you have to stop far enough back that children can cross safely in front of the bus. And most of these buses are gonna have, uh, it's called a cattle guard, which is basically a piece of plastic at the front, which forces the students to walk out around the front of the bus so the driver has a clear view of them. They're, they're not like tied up against the grill in front of the school bus. So that's the other thing that they have on them for purposes of safety. And let me tell you, that if you don't stop for a school bus, it's a severe penalty if you get caught. And know that many of these school buses now are going to have cameras on them and those types of things. So they're gonna be able to get your information, uh, your license plate and whatnot. School crossing guards. These people have the same authority as a police officer. You must obey the directions of crossing guards. We can kind of have a discussion about this that uh, you, where you find crossing guards in and around where you live because where we live they're generally at you know controlled intersections with traffic lights and those types of things so they're just there as kind of a secondary precaution but there are other places that crossing guards will be that are not controlled intersections so that's the other thing uh, mostly but not always at busy intersections as I said there and here where my kids go to school we have one at a controlled intersection it's a busy controlled intersection and oftentimes we have a roundabout where we walk to school and I often think that the crossing guard would do more, be more proactive at the roundabout as opposed to at the controlled intersection. So just my thinking. So good luck on your driver's test and remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. So we'll get back over here. And as Tim just said here, he says possibility of flashing white lights in the rear of uh, BC buses and that is true. It's not just uh, BC buses that they, many of these school buses now have strobe lights on them. Uh, the state of Pennsylvania, I know for a fact, has strobe lights. Other states also have uh, strobe lights on them to try and increase the visibility of their presence on our roadways and that other drivers will take note, hey, there's a school bus there and I need to kind of pay attention that if the school bus comes to a stop and those types of things. And I had a smart driver asking me last week about will they get a ticket if the red lights are flashing but the stop sign's not extended. Once the red lights go on, and if you pass the school bus at that juncture, yes, you can be ticketed. Because there's there's little excuse at that juncture once the red lights come on. Because the school bus will activate the yellow cautionary lights first, warning traffic in and around the vicinity that the, they're going to come to a stop. So that's usually for at least a half a kilometer, maybe a quarter of a kilometer, you know, a quarter of a mile that the cautionary lights are going to come on and then the bus slows down the red lights go on and then the, the stop arm extends so if you miss that you miss that the yellow lights were on plus there's a strobe light on the bus uh you probably shouldn't be driving because you're not being very observant <laughs> and you probably should be a little bit more observant uh okay so reyna is saying that in uh the state of georgia they have uh, school zone lights and yes, this is not just Georgia. There are other places. And uh, just let me know in the comments if you're watching on the replay or you're watching now, if your state or province also has lights that activate when the school speed zones are in effect. Uh, because this is something that some jurisdictions, and it, it might even be at the county level. It may not be just at the state level. Uh, there may be some places in Georgia, for example, or in West Virginia, South Carolina, in California, places like that where it's at the county level that they have these lights that activate uh, when the school speed zone is in effect for the school area. Uh, Yankee, do you consider British Columbia and Ontario as the California New York equivalents of Canada? Uh, Yankee, not in any stretch of the imagination. No. <laughs> <laughs> different country, different states, different I ideologies about driving. Uh, just as one of the examples, Yankee, about that is that the state of California, for example, has 30 million people living in the state of California. We don't, we don't even have 30 million people. We have 32 million people living in the entire country here in Canada. So, yeah, it's not even close. Uh, New York State is number five in the most populated states in the U.S., so not even close. Uh, Miss B, 
the way I practiced my parallel parking was have a car parked in front of where I would be parking, then back up behind it doing the maneuver. This helped me a lot. Yes, and Miss B, in terms of parallel parking, for the purposes of your driver's test, it's unlikely. I have had a few smart drivers come back to me over the years, and I'm, only, I'm saying like one or two a year where they got that ogre driving examiner that made them parallel park between two vehicles. But most places... And there's only three states in the U.S. where you don't have to parallel park for your driver's test. But most places only make you parallel park behind one vehicle, okay? Jim Bob, one time I crashed a train in a simulator, okay? <laughs> That's good it was a simulation. Uh, Lionel, how many cones do I need if I practice at home before the test? Uh, Lionel, usually you can get away with half a dozen cones. We'll help, we'll be able to practice with, and that will be able to do that for you. Uh... Raina, I like your videos. I've seen them around school zones. That's awesome. Uh, okay. Uh, Mallory, here in Nova Scotia, the speed limit in school zones is the same all day, every day, even when children are not present because kids could be playing. Uh, Mallory, I've heard that before, and I don't think that's not true in Nova Scotia. It's only when schools, uh, uh, when students are in session. I looked that up because I had another smart driver that was from Nova Scotia and said the same thing, and that's not true. Okay. So it's only when school is in session. All right. Uh, Blistic, how far from school buses do we have to stop? Usually it's about three vehicle lengths. So, you know, 50 to 100 feet. You know, just back far enough that you can, you know, if you're behind the school bus, stop so you can see the tires of the school bus making clear contact with the pavement. And then in front, you want to stop back far enough that the children have, a, you know, the children are students because it, sometimes it could be high school students. Uh, that far enough that they can, you know, walk around in front of the bus and you're not obstructing their path of travel as they're crossing the roadway. Usually, though, uh, you know, school authorities and bus authorities take a great deal of time in planning the routes of school buses. And oftentimes, they're going to try and avoid having students walking around in front of the bus and crossing the roadway because they know that there's an increased chance that children can be hit by other drivers. So they always try, if possible, to alight passengers from the bus so that they don't have to cross the roadway. So they're stopping on the same side as where the children are going to be going. Uh, so that's one of the things they, they consider when they're doing their bus planning and when school authorities are sitting down with bus authorities and planning that. So just think about that, but don't, <laughs> Don't think that just because a bus, a school bus is stopped that there aren't going to be children crossing the road in front of the school bus. So you do need to come to a stop. Now, the one time that you don't need to stop for a school bus is if there is a concrete median separating the lanes of traffic. That's the one time. Now, the one state, <laughs> my friend Margaret here just popped her head in tonight, uh, <laughs> is the state of New York, which likes to be a little bit different that you in fact have to stop on the other side of a concrete median in the state of New York State because New York State likes to be a little bit different. But every other state, if there's a concrete median, you don't have to stop for a school bus if you're on the other side of the concrete median. And hello, Margaret. Yes, we're back from vacation every Sunday, uh, 6 p.m. PS, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific time. 9 p.m. your time. So really glad that you're here and made it. And how are things in Brooklyn? Are things kind of, weather's nice there. Lamb sauce, how strict should you be with speed management for the purposes of your driver's test? Lamb sauce, you should be very strict with your speed management for the purposes of your driver's test. Speed management is tied into observation because you're scanning forward, you're looking far down the road, you're coming in, you're looking, you're checking your instrument panel far down the road, checking your mirrors, in checking uh, checking your wing mirror, and then far down the road and checking your other wing mirror. So what happens is your every 10 to 12 seconds, you're checking your instrument panel. So every eight to 12 seconds, you are adjusting your speed. And if you are doing that, then the examiner is gonna go, okay, you're observing. But if you're not changing your speed, or adjusting your speed every kind of eight to 12 seconds, what that tells the examiner is, is that he or she is saying to themselves, they're saying, well, they're not observing properly because they're not adjusting their speed. And also know that you should be within 
three or four miles an hour or you should be within three or four kilometers an hour of the posted speed limit for the purposes of your driver's test and with a little bit of practice it's really not that hard to do now know that there are some discretionary situations if you're on a back road where you know there's lots of parked cars on both sides of the road the road is skinny then yes you can go a little bit slower but that's up to you as discretion right uh as part of doing all of that uh reyna <laughs> yes it's monday <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's Monday. Labor Day weekend. That's why we're on Monday. But I still, th obviously, I still think it's Sunday. Uh, it feels like Sunday, but it's really Monday. <laughs> uh, Margaret, we've had bad flooding here during the storms this week, but my building didn't flood. Was over a foot of water in the street, just down the street. Weather today was nice. Crazy how much flooding there has been. Uh, let me tell you a story about flooding and driving and floods. Years ago, oh, it had been 20 years ago, we were living in Ontario and we got a massive amount of rain that one summer and uh we were driving back i had to go to work i was working at the truck driving school i was teaching air brakes on the weekend so i had to get back and i was coming from my mom's and i was you know we were in a hurry obviously because i was late and so we're like we'll go down the back gravel roads and it won't be you know we can go faster <laughs> and we get up to this crossroad and there's just a pylon like a big three foot orange pylon at, at the crossroads and i'm like well i don't know what that's for we go down about half a mile down the road and the road is flooded a lot and we're in a car so <laughs> i just i said to my wife i said just just drive through it it'll be fine and one of the things that i've learned about cars and water talking about flooding on the east coast here is that when the water stops spraying off the car like kind of in a boat you know like the bow of a boat when the it comes off in waves and it just kind of ripples out in front of the car at that juncture the water is too deep to be driving in <laughs> and uh, so anyway the car stalled because the water got into the motor and my wife said to me well i said no i said i said to my wife i said i'll just get out and push and so I get out, I push on the hood of the car and the car goes like 10 feet because it's like floating. <laughs> so yes. So know that, that if the water stops spraying off and it just goes out in ripples in front of the car, at that juncture, the water is too deep to drive in. <laughs> okay. Uh, lamb sauce. Uh, how was, has jujitsu, uh, any goofy stories? No, I don't have any goofy stories with jujitsu. Haven't been back to jujitsu since my vacation, so I'm hoping to get back this. I, no, I'm not hoping. I will get back this week. So next week I'll have some stories for you about jujitsu. Uh, guys, hey, I watched all your videos a whole week before my test and passed, and that is awesome. Congratulations, Clits. Uh, kills. <laughs> congratulations. I got the right one there. Uh, so congratulations on that. That's awesome. Where did you go to celebrate for your passing your driver's test? Uh, Tim, do I teach seniors to pass the ERA? No, I haven't encountered that, Tim. Uh, right now I'm working on the MELT, the mandatory entry level training that they're bringing in for truck drivers uh, in October. So I've been busy with that. Uh, just remind me, Tim, what is the ERA? What does that stand for? Crystal, hey, I heard that some people try to go through on yellow traffic lights so that people can make the traffic before it goes red. Uh, Crystal, that is very true. Lots of people will charge red lights. People will turn left on, uh, not red lights, yellow lights. People will charge yellow lights. That means that they come up and they speed up when the light turns yellow. And they'll also go on yellow lights uh, making a left-hand turn. So yes, that is true. And Corey will put the video up for you on yellow lights, which will help you out with that. Uh, you went to Chaska in Minnesota. Thank you. That is awesome. That sounds like a terrific celebration for passing your driver's test. Again, congratulations. Miss B, when there is a bus with red lights on and you need to turn right before the bus, is this action legal or illegal to do? Oh, okay. Well, if you're on the, Miss B, if you're on the other side of the intersection, so because you're going to be on that side of the intersection, the bus is going to be on this side of the intersection. Yeah, that's probably going to be okay i can't see that it's not going to be okay or going to be illegal uh because and and the other thing is school buses i would need to i would need to just refresh my memory about this but i'm pretty sure that school buses cannot stop at intersections so it will not be at an intersection where there will be a school bus with lights on it'll be back 
half a block from the intersection. All right. Enhanced road assessment. There we go. Uh, no, I haven't got involved in that as of yet, Tim, uh, with the enhanced road assessment for seniors, but, uh, I'm going to have to help my mom here in a couple of years. So, but we can, we can work on that and you can send me an email as well, Tim. And you know, if there's something you need a hand with or something I can help you with, we can certainly, uh, cooperate or I can help you out with that. <laughs> I lost the words there. Uh, Marwa, what was your question? Okay, uh, Marwa, can you just stick it back in for me again here in the comments and I'll answer that for you. Uh, Erdem, do you have a specific course or videos? Yes, Erdem, thank you for reminding me. Pass your driver's test first time course package over at the Smart Drive Test website. Corey, I'll put the link up for you. About $38 US, uh, pass your driver's test first time. Course is guaranteed that you will pass. If you don't pass, we'll give you your money back. As well, we include, as a bonus, the winter and defensive driving smart courses. And both of those will significantly reduce your chances of being involved in a crash after you get your license and make you a safer, smarter driver. So definitely check that out. And as I said, Corey will put the link up there for you. Okay, Corey's put the video up for yellow lights. Thank you for that, Corey. Uh, Raul, if I have a question, do you know how to drive a double trailer, sir? I need tips on obtaining my... L CV license, thanks in advance. And Rahul, where are you? I'm I'm thinking that you're in Australia. Yes, I do know how to uh, pull double trailers. That is a specific license in the state of Australia. So they've got you know light rigid, medium rigid, head, head, heavy rigid, articulating, and then they've got double trailers. Uh, so you're going to have to get your license first. Uh, I think for your articulating unit and then you once you get that then it's almost like an endorsement for your double trailers after that okay uh, and as well Rahul you can just send me an email and I'll be able to help you out and again uh, it's oh you're in Canada okay so you want to pull uh, B double you want to pull super B's is what you want to pull or you're pulling a trains just let me know what in the comments there which which one you're doing uh, another question, should we shoulder check after turning a signal on for the purposes of a driver's test? Yes, lamb sauce. Uh, you cannot shoulder check enough. <laughs> See the video with Ariel. That's the one thing that she said on your driver's test. Make sure you are shoulder checking. So every time you move the vehicle sideways, every time you turn the vehicle, mirror signal shoulder check, okay? And it's almost kind of one movement, right? You're turning the signal on, checking the mirror, and shoulder checking, all kind of in one motion. And there's a video on shoulder checking here. And Corey will put that up for you as well. And that'll help you out to get you going on the shoulder checking. Uh, Tim, you can drive as slowly as is necessary to be safe. However, you cannot hold up other traffic. And that's exactly right. Exactly what Tim is saying about being an impediment to other traffic. If you are blocking other traffic, then you're going to get demerits assigned on a driver's test. And an example of that is turning right on a red light. If there's an intersection, a controlled intersection, you come up and there's a red light and you've been asked to make a right turn and there's very little traffic around, low density traffic, and you fail to make that red light, you, because you just, you can wait for the, you can wait for the red. Yes, you can. If it's busy and you're not completely sure about what's going on with the traffic, but if there's very little traffic around and you don't go, then you will probably not be successful on your driver's test. So know that, so practice that. And also with these maneuvers, some of these maneuvers, if you fail to do them on a driver's test, it's saying to the driving examiner that you don't have a lot of experience and you don't have a lot of time behind the wheel. And because you don't have a lot of time and you're being overly cautious, it's unlikely that you're going to be successful on your driver's test. So know that as well, that there's kind of a balance there with everything that's going on in terms of your driving test, okay? Corey's put up the Smarter Driver course package over at the Smart Drive Test website. Thanks for that, Corey. And if you're looking to do your learners, do your on-road test and be successful, definitely check out that course. And as well, you have access to me and I will help you do everything in my power <laughs> to get you through the course there. Marwa, uh, I asked, is it true that GDL drivers aren't allowed to drive on the highway uh, or after midnight unless uh, they have a fully licensed person? I'm on my test on August 31st. Um, okay, so yes, uh, 
Marwa for the G2 in the province of Ontario, you cannot drive on the 400 highways unless you're accompanied by a licensed driving instructor and you cannot uh, and you cannot drive you know in the hours wee hours of the morning. So uh, to get the specific information, uh, look in the driver's manual, which I just happen to have one right here. <laughs> the Ontario Handbook. Look in here and you'll uh, find the specific information in here for the criteria for the G, uh, G, G, the GLP in the province of Ontario. That's what I was trying to say. There we go. Okay. Lionel, uh, so do you think after the parking test on your road test, do you think the driving test would be easy? Uh, it's easier. Uh, Lionel, yes. Seven eighths of the driver's test is in a forward motion. That one eighth of parking, reverse stall parking, three point turn, parallel parking, those are the hard things that really get students. So make sure that you can, you know how to do those, okay? And you can do those well, because if you can do those well, oh, you're in Alberta. You threw me because you called it the G. Uh, no, Marwa. Okay, so Marwa, it's best if you send me an email and I'll be able to look up the specific rules for you and send that information to you because I don't want to give you the wrong information because I don't have the information off the top of my head for Alberta. Okay, and Corey's put the email up there for me as well. So awesome. Uh, Raina, my driver's license made a one year on September the 1st. Congratulations, that is absolutely awesome. Lily, I passed my road test last week. However, when I did a lane change right after the intersection in order to turn left, an ambulance honked at me. I thought I failed at that moment. Uh, Lily, <laughs> the ambulance didn't have its lights and sirens going. If it didn't, then it's just another vehicle. You don't have to, uh, that's, you know, sometimes that happens. Uh, Rain, I forgot to shoulder checking sometimes, but I use my mirrors. Uh, yeah, but you, Raina, you should still shoulder check, okay? It's the one thing that drivers lose after they get their license. So please, please continue to shoulder check. Because remember, not shoulder checking is to driving. What not checking a weapon to see if it's loaded is, is to gun safety, okay? It's the same thing. You're moving, you're moving at speed with a heavy vehicle and you got to shoulder check to make sure there's somebody there that you're not going to run over. So shoulder check, shoulder check, shoulder check. Please and thank you. Uh, epic regarding school buses on a divided highway if you were on the opposite side you must slow down to 10 miles per hour as said on New Jersey uh, driver's manual and New Jersey regulations other states don't allow this uh, that's interesting epic I haven't seen that and I will need to look those regulations up I just want to confirm that in the state of New Jersey because my understanding was is it was only the state of New York that on the other side of a median you're saying divided highway okay so you're not, um, so the difference might be that it's a divided highway, but not necessarily a highway that's divided by a concrete median. Uh, concrete median in most places, except New York is the only place that I know that you don't have to, that you don't have to come to a stop if it's divided by a concrete median. So, but you're saying divided highway, that makes sense if it's just a divided highway. FM, I practice for road test only in the summer, road test class five in a week in Langley. Any advice? Uh, yes, uh, Tips and strategies for passing your driver's test. Corey will put that video up for you. Have a look at that. That will definitely help you out and make sure that you pass your driver's test. Comedy, how to get uh, tight spots as a new driver is scary. Uh, so tight spots, uh, comedy is the slower the vehicle goes, the sharper it turns, the more time you have to observe. So if you're in tight spaces, just go slower. It's the same thing. So think of it like this. Somebody's backing out of a parking space in a grocery store parking lot. When they back up and they're near something else, another car or a light standard or something like that, and they back up and they go, <gasps> the car doesn't get smaller when they, when they suck their breath in. What happens is they slow down and the vehicle actually turns sharper. So know that when you're in tight spaces, and this is for comedy and for everybody else, when you're in tight spaces, the slower you go, the sharper the vehicle turns, both forward and in reverse, all right? Okay. Uh, Lionel, I think I asked you how many cones would I need if I get four off Amazon. Yeah, Lionel, half a dozen cones will work for you. You don't need to buy cones. You can just rent cones from any industrial rental shop. They'll have the pylons, they'll have those 
uh, three foot tall delineators and those are the best because you can actually see them so if you're working on the passenger side of the vehicle you can actually see those cones and you can get a sense of where your vehicle is in relationship to the curb and that's what you want to do because when you start parking next to the curb you can't see the curb so you want something that you can see on that side of the vehicle when you're learning and then after you get comfortable with getting the passenger side of the vehicle near those cones then you can go out and practice parking near the curb. And Corey will put the video up for you about how to back along a curb and how to get a sense of where the curb is in relationship to your vehicle. Mallory, when I talked about earlier is the law in my school district. Uh, Mallory, yeah, no, I don't think so, Mallory. I know, I'm pretty, I'm almost positive it is. I'll look it up, send me an email and just remind me, but the school zone the school speed zone signs are only in effect when school is in session i don't know of any place that that is not the the rule in the law okay uh maru i failed because of parallel parking okay so you're gonna have to do some more practice with your parallel parking awesome uh tim i'm lucky my focus is bc if someone asks me an out of province question i send them there for the answer i bring your broad knowledge thank you so much tim yeah it's, it's a bit of work trying to keep up with everything else. And, uh, you know, definitely sometimes I need to go back to the manuals and have a look for sure. Okay, Crystal, I also practiced my driving yesterday with my dad. He said I did good and I'm still going to work on picking up speed because driving on a real road, you must drive with the flow of traffic. Crystal, not for the purposes of your driver's test. You cannot drive the flow of traffic. And this is for everybody else taking a driving test, watching now or watching on the replay. If you're taking a driving test, you must go the speed limit, the posted speed limit. If you keep up with the flow of traffic, you're going to fail your driver's test. You will not be successful in your driver's test. And this is one of the challenges of taking a driver's test is, is that everything that you need to do for the purposes of your driver's test goes against <laughs> social driving, right? You can't do all of that social driving stuff. And this is why that I encourage you to take a couple of lessons with a driving instructor so that you know exactly what you need to do and the skills and abilities and techniques that you need to have in place for the purposes of passing your driver's test. <coughs> uh, Lionel, wish I would have known that now do they have you do the parking on the right or left? I'm from Michigan. Uh, Lionel, curb parking. So if you have to park along a curb, and this is up to the discretion of the examiner, whether you park along a curb or not, you have to know how far your vehicle is on that passenger side from the curb. And the thing is, that's your second biggest blind area on the vehicle. Your first one obviously is out the back. Your second one is off the passenger side of the vehicle. And it's kind of hard to judge that when you first learn how to drive, how far away are the wheels on the passenger side of the vehicle. So that's why I encourage you to use pylons. And if you've got the shorter pylons, just get some broomsticks or doweling or something else that you can just stick in there so that you can make them a bit taller and you can see them, okay? Aiden, I've got my G2 road test tomorrow. Any tips? Uh, Aiden, yes. Uh, Corey, I believe. Uh, uh, look at the video just up there above your comment. Tips, techniques, and tricks to pass your driver's test first time. Have a look at that video and that will definitely help you out for your test tomorrow and good luck on that. Manash, uh, when I turn left to a multi-lane road and if the oncoming vehicles are turning right to the rightmost lane, should I wait or can I turn left to the leftmost lane? You can turn left if there are vehicles turning right into the right lane, but don't turn in beside them. Just pause and turn in behind them or turn in front of them. You want to stagger the vehicles because you don't want to turn in beside two of them because oftentimes when drivers turn on multi-lane roads this is another piece of social driving is that they'll turn into the right lane but they'll drift over to the left lane almost immediately same thing if they make a left hand turn they'll just drive into the right hand lane they won't turn left lane to left lane and right lane to right lane so anytime that you're turning onto a multi-lane road make sh defensive strategy is is that you stagger where you're turning when you turn onto those multi-lane roads All right, DC, how is the backing in BC, uh, backlog in BC? I can't book a road test for a long time. I'm considering going four hours away. Is this a good idea? Uh, DC, it is. 
And for anybody else who's having difficulty booking a driver's test, there's a few things that you can do to try and speed up getting a driver's test, okay? As DC said, you can go to a different town, uh, keep calling in, get yourself on a waiting list, go to a driving school and use their vehicle because driving schools have blocks of time each week that they have driving tests. So if you get in with a driving school, you may get in sooner for a road test because they have those blocks of time. But get yourself also on the, you know, on the waiting list. If there's a cancellation, then you might be able to get in sooner as well. Now, keep in mind, for those of you who are living in bigger cities, New York City, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, uh, you know, Albuquerque, Dallas, Houston, Montreal, Toronto, you go for a driver's test in these big metropolitan cities, your driver's test is going to be very short. It's going to be kind of 8 to 12 minutes. I learned just recently that if you go to one of these little towns where there's, you know, some driving examiners, uh, they don't do a whole lot of road tests during the day. So they've got a lot of time to spend with you doing a road test. So instead of an 8 to 12 minute road test, you're now probably going to be doing a 30 to 40 minute road test in one of these smaller uh, centers that has a DMV and those types of things. So just know that as well and kind of be prepared for that if you go to a small kind of rural location that you could be spending a lot more time doing your driver's test as opposed to a big metropolitan city where it's kind of going to be 8 to 12 minutes. All right, know that. Miss B, uh, okay, excellent. Jim Bob, how should I drive a three-wheel uh, long truck? Uh, Jim Bob, are you talking about like something like a U-Haul or something, something along those lines? Uh, Marwa is like... Okay, recommend not to think about it too much. Okay, excellent. Is it okay to do hand over hand on the road test? Yes, most places, Lionel, do hand over hand for the purposes of a driver's test. I, I know very few places that do hand to hand. They're mostly in Europe if they're doing hand to hand. Some driving instructors say that they do. <laughs> Goose, uh, one, of my, one of the smart drivers here who's a driving instructor, had a conversation with another driving instructor in Ontario about that. So you need to check with the local driving examiners and most driving instructors will be able to tell you. But in my experience with most people that I talk to, most smart drivers, most driving instructors, it is in fact hand over hand for the purposes of a driver's test. Jackie, the Smith Space Cushion System really stuck in my head. Hope it helps me in October. Uh, Jackie, uh, the Smith Space Cushion System is old. Okay, <laughs> it's okay, but it's old. And four of the five tenants of the Smith Space Cushion System are about observation. And there's a lot more going on in driving than just observation. So just know that. Okay, uh, Pure, I had my driving test September 10, but I'm not confident that I'm going to pass. I'm going to have to reschedule. I'm not even using the same car. Okay, Pure, go for your driver's test. Don't reschedule. You might pass. Okay, there's a 50-50 chance that you could pass. All right, so go and do that. Okay, Jim Bob, you're talking about a fire truck. Uh, Jim Bob, are you taking any lessons? Is anybody giving you some training on doing a fire truck uh, and getting a license for that? Corey's put up the video on how to steer a car correctly. Thank you for that, Corey. Uh, Miss B, when you have your license, should you maintain the speed limit or go the flow of traffic, even if it's above the posted speed limit? Miss B, once you have your driver's license, I strongly encourage you to keep up with the traffic flow. That way you're more predictable on the roadway and you are, other drivers are going to know what you're doing. You're going to be safer, smarter driver on the roadway. You know, and uh, that's that's my thing. Keep up with traffic flow. You know, if you ins if you want to do if you're not comfortable with that and you want to do the speed limit, then do if you're on multi lane roads, then do stay over to the right hand lane. Uh, you know, as, so that other traffic can move around you while you're driving and those types of things. Because you, as we said before, we were talking about this. You don't want to be an impediment on the roadway. You don't want to be holding up other traffic. Okay. Uh, you know, when I went to Ontario here in this in August and I drove to Ontario I drove on a lot of two lane and there's always somebody who's doing going slower than the rest of the traffic and there's like 20 cars piled up behind them and they're all trying to pass 
and passing is a dangerous maneuver and when you're driving slower and you're holding up traffic it's it's dangerous it just you're you become a hazard on the roadway okay uh Menashe, I have my G2 test tomorrow. Good luck on that. You're going to do awesome. Remember to breathe. That will cause your body to relax. Excellent. Uh, Pure, I heard if I fail three times, I have to get my learners again. Is there a wait time between? Okay, Pure, where are you? And ha have you already been unsuccessful on your test a couple of times or is this your first time? Uh, Crystal, well, I am thinking about going to a driving school because one of my friends went to a driving school and got their learner's permit, but I know some driving schools teach you to drive in a vehicle. Yes, Crystal, I, maybe you didn't word that right, but all driving schools <laughs> teach you to drive in a vehicle. Uh, Minosh, how to figure out if I am turning left on a multi-lane or signal, single lane road? Uh, Minosh, you just got to observe the intersection and see how many lanes of traffic there are. Raina, good luck to everyone who's taking a road test. Thank you for that encouragement. Awesome. All right. Jim Bob, in a simulator, I drove a fire truck in and out of cone forward and backwards, but every time I do it backwards, I always hit the cones. Okay, Jim Bob, trust me, it's completely different driving a real fire truck as it is driving it in a simulator. It's completely different. Uh, Pure, if it's your first time, go give it a go. You, you could pass. Okay, give it a go. You got a 50-50 chance. Uh, and you're in the state of Georgia. Uh, I would need to look that up on terms of three passes and you have to get your learners again. I have never heard that, so I don't know for sure. I would need to look that up. Uh, Jim, hey Rick, why are the driving instructors so high to take driving lessons and we need uh, random people need to go about teaching people how to drive that don't know how? Uh, Jim, you're going to have to reword that because I'm not, oh, you're saying that driving lessons are too expensive. Yes, I can agree with you that driving lessons are expensive. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. They are expensive. Uh, Mallory, please stop for school buses no matter what direction you are traveling because you never know if that child is getting off the bus. Yes, and that's what we need to do for the purposes of keeping everyone on the road safe. Uh, Lionel, when you turn, do you brake or push the gas more? Okay, so Lionel, in an ideal world, you slow down between before the curve where you're going to turn, and then you release the brake, you turn, you steer the vehicle. When you get halfway around the corner, then you start to accelerate. Look in the direction you want to go and accelerate the vehicle. That's what you do. That's what you do in an ideal world. Because if you get slippery or you get into compromised conditions, rain, sleet, or ice, and you try to brake and turn at the same time, you're going to find that the vehicle will slide out on you. So you need to learn to separate those two actions. Brake when you're in a straight line, go around the corner, steer the vehicle, and then halfway through the corner, start to apply uh, the gas pedal and accelerate out of the corner. Lionel, when I go on the freeway, do I get in the middle lane or the right lane? Uh, when you get on the freeway, Lionel, you want to get in the right lane on the freeway, okay? Angel. This is my first time commuting to college this year since I got my license. Angel, you're going to do awesome. <laughs> Drop us a note if we can help or you have any questions and we can help out. We'll be more than happy to help you out do that. Uh, where are you going to college? T app. My driver's test is in November. When should I start taking driving lessons? Uh, T app. The sooner you can take some driving lessons, get some information about what you need to do for the purposes of your driver's test some skills, abilities, and techniques in place, then you can practice those. You'll have more time to practice those and get ready for your driver's test in November. Lang, how recent uh, did you film your Smarter Driver course? Uh, Lang, it's it's up to date, okay? it's The course is up to date. It's completely guaranteed that you passed your driver's test. If you don't pass your driver's test, we'll refund your money, all right? And if you're interested, check out the Smarter Driver course over at the Smart Drive Test website and completely 100% guaranteed as well. We throw in as a bonus, the winter and defensive driving smart courses, and those will keep you safe after you get your license. So check out the Smarter Driver course package over at the Smart Drive Test website. Uh, Minosh, can I adjust my vehicle like you have shown in your videos while making a left turn on my 
driver's test uh, to see any oncoming traffic because of the other vehicles. Okay, so Minosh, you're talking about the jig jog where if there's a large vehicle on the other side of the intersection, you can't see past it. You have to move your vehicle out to the left a little bit and then bring the front of the vehicle back so you can see past that vehicle. Yes, you can. But again, that's an advanced maneuver. And for anybody who wants to be able to do that or learn how to do that, make sure that you're with a mentor that can help you do that successfully, okay? Because you don't want to be moving out into oncoming traffic. Angel, you're going to Av Avila University in Kansas City, Missouri. That is awesome. <laughs> Kansas City, Missouri. I'm only laughing about that because in uh, the movie Million Ways to Die in the West, they were... <laughs> <laughs> they were talking about that about Kansas City being in Missouri and they're like oh that's just confusing <laughs> so but that's funny but congratulations on going to college that is just really really great that's awesome uh, Adrian I'm taking my test tomorrow practice so much Congre uh, good luck on your test tomorrow Adrian remember to breathe that will cause your body to relax and you're going to do awesome so big, uh, please drop back and let us know how you go on your driver's test tomorrow uh, Raina, be careful with scams with driving schools. Please look at the reviews and do your research. Uh, that happened to my friend. Yes. When you're looking at driving schools, Google is very good. Go on and look at the Google reviews. Okay. And get information. Go to the driving school. Talk to the people there at the counter and get some feedback about how much it costs, when they're going to do lessons with you, whether you're going to be the only person in the vehicle with the driving instructor or whether you're going to be in the vehicle with other people, okay? So, yeah, you don't want to get scammed because it does cost money at driving schools. And unfortunately, those scams are out there. It's just, unfortunately, a reality of our life. Uh, Muj, just stop to say thanks again. Your videos were invaluable, and I passed just in time to drive into the fall semester. Muj, that is awesome news. Congratulations on passing your driver's test, and thank you so much for dropping back and letting us know that you passed your driver's test. And all the best at college or university, wherever you're off to. That's great. Uh, GH in Phoenix, Arizona, the roads are so narrow, there's no room to do the jig jog. All right. Uh, there's so GH, there's it's gonna, it's really gonna depend on the intersection where you're gonna be doing the jig jog, where you're gonna move, be moving over to the left a little bit. Because again, it comes back to that. Am I impeding traffic? Because if you can move forward a little bit and move over to the left a little bit so you can see past that big vehicle on the other side of the intersection, you're going to need to do that. Because if you don't do that and you're just sitting there and you're not being proactive in your driving, you're not responding accordingly to the changing traffic conditions, then you're going to either be assigned major demerits or, depending on the discretion of the driving examiner, you're going to fail your driver's test. You have to respond accordingly because your job as the person taking the driving test is to demonstrate to the examiner that you have due care and control of the vehicle in changing traffic conditions. Changing traffic conditions is a big vehicle on the other side of the intersection. When you're making a left-hand turn, you can't see around it. You're not just going to blindly go because if you blindly go and you don't look, not boldly go as in Star, War, Star Trek, but blindly go, if you blindly go into a situation, that's an automatic fail on a driver's test. But if you move the vehicle over to the left and then you bring your front back and you peek past that vehicle and you, you can see the oncoming traffic, that's going to be fine. And it, it doesn't really, it isn't determined by how wide the road is or how big the intersection is because there's lots of intersections where the two left turning lanes are offset from one another and you need to maneuver your vehicle a little bit so that you can see. And I will emphasize this again to all the smart drivers watching now or those watching on the replay, never ever blindly go into an intersection. Never blindly go making a left-hand turn because you can't see past that big vehicle on the other side. I've had n a number of students fail driver's tests because and one case is coming to mind in particular, they followed a big vehicle into the intersection. Well, what happened was, is the vehicle went into the intersection, the big vehicle went into the intersection on the yellow, and they followed them into the intersection, the light went red, and they failed their driver's test. So, if you can't see, stop. 
or if you can't deal with a traffic situation on your driver's test, just stop, okay? Make sure that you can see, make sure that it is safe for you to execute your maneuver before you go. And that means being able to look past a large vehicle on the other side of the intersection before making and committing to your left-hand turn. Krista, I got my license last month and I'm a teenager. My dad wants to wait to get insurance because it's cheaper the longer you have your license. Uh, do you recommend getting your insurance now or wait? Uh, Krista, it's, it's, yes, it's based on how long you have your driver's license, but it's also based on driving experience and the fact that you don't have any crashes. And also, crazy as this sounds with insurance, for some insurance companies and many insurance companies, it, it's also how long have you had insurance? So it's going to depend on a number of factors. It's not an easy answer about whether you should wait or not. I would just say get your insurance as soon as you can and then start getting that experience, having insurance, not having crashes, and that way your insurance eventually is gonna to start to go down. I know it's just crazy how expensive insurance is. I just got my house insurance and my house insurance went up 30% and there's like no explanation of why my insurance went up. So yeah, I, I, I feel you, I feel you for sure. Uh, fun to watch, how do I practice driving on the freeway? Uh, the best way to practice driving on the freeway is go out early in the morning when there isn't as much traffic or go out later in the evening and go with a mentor, somebody that you trust or go with a driving instructor and say, listen, I wanna practice driving on the freeway. So that's my uh, advice on that. Uh, Pierre, will the driving instructor tell you what speed limits are? Uh, no, they will not tell you. you. That's part of reading traffic signs while you're doing your driving test. And again, do care and control of the vehicle in changing traffic conditions. So Pure, what I suggest to you is to go out and drive around the area surrounding the DMV where you're going to be taking your test, okay? Excellent, Crystal, I should say my dad let me drive to Lowe's, which was right across the way from where I was practicing, where I was driving from. And not only that, but I also got to drive home, which was across the way. Awesome, so you're getting lots of experience driving. That's awesome. Paul, I'm taking my driving test and I'm 45 years old. Thanks for the videos. You are most welcome, my friend. Good luck in your driver's test. Draw back and let us know how it goes. Remember to breathe. That'll cause your body to relax while you're taking your test. Uh, Tim, you're required to stay on the right-hand half of the roadway in BC. Remember that for the jig jog. Yes, you're still, you're still right of center. <laughs> you're still right of center, okay, when you're, when you're doing the jig jog. But you're just moving over like six inches so you can see past that big big vehicle now the other piece about this is know that this is you know and i've talked about this previously about some traffic situations there are some traffic situations that we may not encounter for months maybe even years so driving at night in the rain for example i can't remember the last time that i drove at night in the rain uh, you know, it's been years and it's the same thing with the jig jog. It's not going to happen at every intersection. It's going to happen every now and again. So it's one of those things that if you can get an opportunity to practice it with a driving instructor or practice it with a mentor in the vehicle, it's going to make it a lot easier because it's not something that's going to happen very often. So don't get fixated on these things because you may never have to do it for the purposes of your driver's test. It's the same thing as driving at night in a snowstorm. That's gonna, I can't even remember the last time I drove in a snowstorm. It's been, it's been something, it might be decades. It's the same thing with driving at night in the rain or driving at night in the fog. It only happens once every five years or so. So this is the interesting thing about driving is, is there's many, many traffic situations that you won't encounter for months and years. So know that, okay? So let's not get fixated on it. Good night, Tim. All the best, my friend. And we'll see you next week. Uh, Blessed Hyra, can you tell me which brand of tires are the best to get? Uh, Blessed, I am a huge Michelin fan, as is my brother, who is a auto mechanic and he sells tires. Michelin are the best tires you can buy, in my mind, okay? I recommend Michelins to anybody. So, you know, if cost is a factor, they may not be the best tire, you know, they may not be the best recommendation because they are, they're not cheap, okay? 
But if you can get Michelins, put Michelins on your car because they're just performance, handling, safety. They're just they're awesome, awesome tires. I have a pair of, uh, you know, I would have Michelins on the on the buggy if they still made the size for my vehicle. But I do have winter Michelins, and I just absolutely love them. I just I, I just can't say that enough. Okay. Uh, Minosh, how long will the road, G road test be? Uh, it depends, Minosh, where you're taking your driver's test. Big metropolitan areas, it's probably going to be kind of 8 to 15 minutes. If you're looking at a smaller center where there aren't many vehicles, it's probably going to be in the kind of, you know, 15 to 30 minute range. That's what, it, what it's going to be. Darren, uh, how are you supposed to feel as a new driver? Is it okay to be nervous? Uh, Darren, absolutely it is okay to be nervous okay remember a little bit of anxiety is going to keep you safe and, and help you to make the right decision when you're driving okay uh reina do you recommend new drivers drive in the snow or wait for a while until you have experience no reina absolutely drive in the winter get used to it just make sure that you have you start braking earlier braking and steering are two separate actions in the winter time and make sure that you stay back and have lots of space space break early get stopped creep up to where you actually want to stop and there's a whole series on winter tires our winter driving series Corey will put that up for you as well as well Corey's put the video up here on prevent winter tire blowouts it's a video that i did with gary uh he owns tireland here in vernon he gives a lot of recommendations on great tires uh for your vehicle so have a look at all of that as well uh, Jackie, in one of your videos, you stated the Smith Space Cushion system is old, but yet relevant in today's driving uh, environment. Uh, yes, it is old. It still has merit for sure, uh, the Smith Space Cushion system. But I have another system which I believe is much more comprehensive. And uh, again, I'm going to get that written out. I'm going to start getting that out to people to help them make them safer, smarter drivers. Okay. Excellent, Jim, to drive. Uh, okay, Minosh, can I have my driving instructor in the car on your driver's test? Minosh, no, you're in the driving, you're in the vehicle by yourself on your road test. Rick, uh, last, can't, Comeo, I can't take my eyes off the pedestrians crossing countdown and I start slowing based on, even though it's not amber yet, what would your advice be? Uh, look farther down the road, get your eyes off the there because that is distracting for example uh mallory I did not even know what the jig jog was until i started watching your videos and channel <laughs> awesome uh dark flame is the end driver's test as crazy as a full license no because they don't expect you to have as much experience as you would with a full license blessed is the tire needs air will the car let me know not sure about this uh, blessed I believe you have a newer vehicle and yes it will have a air monitoring system on it the car will have that on it and it will tell you that you need uh, air in the tires uh, sometimes they go wonky and you have to reset them but that's not really hard to do just have a look at your owner's manual okay crystal have a good night Rick I see you next live stream next Sunday yes okay uh, Smith space cushion system uh, head over to the Smart Drive Test website, click in the search box at the top and type in Smith Space, Space Cushion System and there's a video there and that will show you the Smith Space Cushion System. Okay, we're going to leave it there for tonight. Uh, if you're watching now, watching on the replay, leave a comment down in the comment section. Send me an email, rick at smartdrivetest.com. We'll help you out to get your license, make you a safer, smarter driver, start a career as a truck or bus driver. You had a test in the last couple of weeks. Congratulations on passing. You have a test coming up. Good luck on that. Remember to breathe and remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.